Hello, our topic is the zodiac sign Scorpio. I'm going to star start by reading to you the meaning of Scorpio according to astrologer Alan Oaken. This is a quote from his website, alanoaken.com. This is the specific website page given here at the bottom of this slide. Okay, let me read this to you. Scorpio rising. Well, here he's talking specifically about Scorpio rising. Scorpio rising reveals one of the most difficult and important tests. By tests, he means tests that you face in your lifetime. It is the sign through which an individual must pass in order to come into those transformative crises which turn desire into love and personal will into the will to good of the soul. Scorpio can be called the sign of the disciple, for it is through the path of discipleship that we eventually learn how to effectuate these necessary transmutations of our lower self. So this is an interpretation that looks at the zodiac signs as fundamentally having a spiritual purpose. They, they are a stage in the evolution of the soul. And the stage that Scorpio is in is the battleground. The battleground where selfishness, self-centeredness, greed, the vices you might say, get transformed and transmuted in the battleground of life into these higher functions of love and service to the higher uh, to the higher being or higher purposes of life. Okay, let me continue. When an individual is born with Scorpio rising, she has committed herself to this battle in the present incarnation. The lower self has to be redeemed by the higher. The purpose in the path of Scorpio rising is not just to do battle. It is through such conflict that the real task of Scorpio rising takes place, transformation. So there's a battle person comes into the lifetime to do this battle and it's not just a battle for the sake of the battle the purpose of the battle is transformation so we have the three symbols of Scorpio the snake which is instinctive life being in life and responding to your instincts the eagle where the instinctive life is rising to a higher purpose and then the phoenix the trans the ultimate goal the transformation of the lower potentials to the higher potential of the person. So this is the one interpretation of Scorpio when you look at zodiac signs as phases in a as in the spiritual development of the person. Another popular interpretation of Scorpio is to describe it as simply personality characteristics without a focus on uh, the zodiac sign as some great uh, as some phase in, in a great process of the evolution of the soul. And the qualities given to Scorpio is that Scorpio is quiet. So it's, when I say Scorpio, this would be a person with a lot of planets in Scorpio, or Scorpio rising, and uh, say a few planets in Scorpio, if you have a lot of Scorpio in your chart, even just Scorpio rising, if the sun is in Scorpio would give it to you to some extent, this tendency to be quiet, magnetic, mysterious, also distrustful and secretive and intense. Scorpio digs deep and undergoes transformations through its intense involvement. So again, the idea of transformation, but here the emphasis is on an intense involvement. There is a bit of the magician or alchemist to Scorpio in that they have a kind of animal instinct for knowing what to do, how to do it, and to transform things. Scorpio is the heart surgeon and the hypnotist. Not always literally, but that's the image of Scorpio. So you see that this interpretation of Scorpio has some things in common with Alan Oaken's uh, interpretation. So these are the uh, common ideas of Scorpio. I think it's a very beautiful idea. You know, both of these concepts very alluring. Um, you know, it captures a, a, a like an archetypal theme in our minds. Um, it's something that, that our souls can resonate with. Um, and the idea that this part of the sky reflects this archetypal theme and this story and these qualities is very intriguing. Um, 
Now, as intriguing as that is, and how and as wonderful it is, and given the fact that it actually works fairly well, um, I I have found in the research and in the research that I'll show uh, in this video that these interpretations don't always work, or they're hard to see how they're working. If they are working, it's not always easy to see it. So I'm going to give you an alternative interpretation of Scorpio, which is based on the idea that each zodiac sign describes a way of relating to the world. Each zodiac sign notices certain things and responds to those things, those things in particular ways. And what Scorpio does is it becomes fully engaged in, a, in an activity and becomes fully immersed in it. Here are three examples of what we could call Scorpio experiences. Number one, being fully absorbed in watching a movie. Okay, well, watching a movie is not some battleground of the soul where you're being transformed. Uh, you know, it's not some quiet, intense, magnetic thing. You're just watching a movie. What happens when you watch a movie? For most of us, we become very engaged. You know, the, the movie uh, absorbs all of our senses. We, we're just captivated by the movie. Our, our full attention is engaged in the movie. We're seeing it, we're hearing it, uh, our emotions, our mind is fully drawn into the movie. That experience of having your full attention drawn into something, I think is the Scorpio experience. It's the way of relating to the world that that is the Scorpio function. The Scorpio function is to fuse, to merge, to merge you into life. So and that you're not thinking about yourself, you're not daydreaming or flitter, you know, flittering about, you're, you, you're totally absorbed in the experience. Okay, here's another example. Reading a book that is so engrossing that you do not hear someone calling your name or you lose track of time. We've all had this experience. You're, you're, you're engaged in something. Maybe you're reading a book or maybe you're in a workshop, you know, working on something. I think that things like pottery, ceramics, these activities, you tend to get absorbed into them, just like watching a movie or a good book. You just become fully involved. Um, your instincts, your, your emotions, everything, you're just part of that experience. That is the Scorpio experience. Um, and when that happens, you, you don't notice things around you. Uh, time may go by faster than you realize. A third example would be skiing down a mountain, because again, all of your attention is needed. Uh, otherwise, you may get into an accident. You can't be skiing down a mountain and uh, lose attention or lose focus. And and the more that you become the experience, a lot of sports are very scorpionic, very Scorpio. Sports are, are, are not something that's usually associated with Scorpio, but very often I find that many sports have a strong Scorpio quality in that they fully engage you, fully involve you, uh, such as skiing, for example. So this interpretation that I'm suggesting is different from the usual interpretation. It, maybe you don't like this interpretation. Maybe it's not spiritual. Maybe it's not juicy enough. Maybe it's not mythological enough. Well, regardless of that, we don't get to decide what astrology is, and I think that this interpretation works more consistently, and I'm going to show you the evidence, I'm going to show you examples of why I believe that this interpretation works more consistently, and that the usual interpretations reveal things that often happen, that, that develop out of this relationship to the world. If you, if you are the kind of person who gets deeply engrossed in life every day. You get merged into your experience, like you're a potter or ceramics person, or you're involved in some kind of sport that fully involves you, or you're a heart surgeon. Those images of the heart surgeon, very good. Scorpio images, full attention, fully merged into the experience. Um, you know, if you do those things, then the, the things that are said about Scorpio often happen. I'll explain how they are, you might say, symptoms or expressions of this way of relating to the world. Um, okay, so 
this is the this interpretation of the zodiac signs uh, and specifically Scorpio as being merged into your experience is part of what I call vibrational astrology. It's the interpretation of the, of Scorpio that we use in vibrational astro astrology. And here's the idea: when you become fully involved in something, as Scorpio does, then you might become magnetic, right? I mean, you can, you might become charismatic. There's a good chance of it because of that intense focus and merging into things. You you you're not fluttering about. Uh, you have this focused magnetism that can develop. So it's a, a typical uh, expression or symptom of the Scorpio process. But we're going to see people who are deeply engaged and they don't necessarily develop these personality characteristics as obviously uh, as, as most Scorpios do. So what I'm saying is that people with a lot of Scorpio consistently, you know, we could say basically always have this deep immersion in life. If they don't have the deep immersion in life, they're dysfunctional. When, when the Scorpio person is in tune with the, with the way energy work wants to flow through them, this is the way they operate. And this will always be true. The magnetism, the charisma, uh, those are things that uh, are common. Uh, the image of the surgeon requires deep concentration. Now, being suspicious and secretive this is often said about Scorpio, and it's true. Why is Scorpio suspicious and secretive? Because once they bond, when they bond personally, they become part of the, part of the person they bond to, and they become vulnerable. So they they mute, they you know fuse, and also it's often said that Scorpio is prone to jealousy. Well, of course they're prone to jealousy because they have fused with that other person. They they lose separation. They become part of their. Experience experience and also the emphasis on transformation if you're deeply immersed in life you change you are not the same you become part of the experience that's a transformative experience so what is said about scorpio i'm suggesting is, is true um usually true and they are expressions of this process now i'm going to show you some clearer examples of of why, um, you, you know, I, I I believe that this way of engaging in the world is more common. Okay, mention these common experiences. Um, uh, pain, um, if separated from a partner or dearly loved one, of course, we all feel pain when, when there, something like that happens. But for Scorpio, the pain can be excruciating because it's like cutting off an arm. They, they become part of that person. Also, Scorpio is often related to animals. Um, interestingly, the opposite sign of Taurus is, is related to plants. People with a lot of Taurus usually love plants because Taurus is this unfolding, natural unfolding from within. It's very attuned to the plant kingdom, which unfolds from within. And Scorpio has that full attention. If you imagine an animal watching a potential predator, or stalking a potential prey. If you've seen a cat who's curious about something and focused on something, um, it's obvious that the cat, this is true with, with most animals, they're just fully attentive. They're fully engaged. So when a mind is fully focused like this and your instincts are, are uh, kick in, your intuition kicks in, your sense of smell, you, you pick up... Uh, uh, information you know from all of your senses you're, you're fully engaged this is the Scorpio experience so Scorpio does have a relationship to animals and I think that that's why um, now here's um, an example of Scorpio um, I'm going to show you the results of a study of the most Scorpio people four people from from our database of over 22,000 people with recorded birth times um, and the, the, the top four people, Art Carney does not come out as one of the top four. Um, he's just a little bit behind them. He has extreme Scorpio. But I'm going to show Art, I'm going to describe Art Carney uh, for teaching purposes because he helps. Um, we know a lot about Art Carney and, and some aspects of his life help uh, uh, illustrate what's going on with Scorpio. Um, Art Carney was a comedian. Um, 
some of you, if you're old enough, you're familiar with Art Carney, you can, you know, Google his name and read about him. Here's Art Carney's birth chart. He's got Taurus rising, Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Venus in Scorpio. That's a lot of Scorpio. How is Art Carney Scorpio? Is he magnetic? Is he intense? Is he sexy? Is he charismatic? Actually, he's kind of light. He's a comedian. He's funny. Where is the Scorpio? If we think of Scorpio as deep immersion, as as becoming one with the experience, um, we we see that Art Carney goes through uh, some life experiences that are very, very, very common for Scorpio. What happens with Art Carney is he divorces his wife and then later remarries her. Um, so, uh, and after his divorce, he has alcohol and drug problems. Um, and then he later remarries his wife. This is extremely Scorpionic. Why is this Scorpio? Because Scorpio really doesn't get divorced. Once they bond and they fuse, they're fused. They become one with that person. Uh, it's very, very painful, and remarrying the same person, uh, when that happens, very often the person has a lot of Scorpio, and there we have it. Um, and his moon in Scorpio, right on the, the descendant, um, this is, not, you know, very literally what happens in his life. If you look at Scorpio in just purely more symbolic terms, you'd say, oh, that intensity of that experience is very Scorpio. But what this emphasis on an energy process, this, this process of merging does, is it tells us more specifically what kind of intense experience it is. It's an intensity that comes from becoming one with other people, becoming one with your experience, and he goes through those experiences. So we see the typical manifestation of Scorpio um, in his life. So and again, Scorpio is not always charismatic, not always a, the heart surgeon type of person, but this intense bonding is always true. Um, so I think Art Carney um, exhibits very clearly the process of Scorpio that we see over and over and over again. In the 1970s, I interviewed thousands of people, and I had many experiences. I, had, I can remember... Uh, very clearly, two or three experiences where I interviewed people. We had one case of a person uh, when I was teaching classes who came in for a practice consultation. Huge Scorpio stelliums. The people were not charismatic. They were not intense. They were, they, they just were kind of normal, gentle people. Didn't seem Scorpio, but the bonding, the pain that they would go through um, from separation and relationships. Many of them were potters, uh, you know, working in ceramics, working in studios. This merging, this just being involved in what they're doing. Um, and sometimes you don't even notice it because that's what they do. They go in their workshop. They just become deeply involved. Um, it doesn't seem that unusual or, or, you know, so intense. They just get deeply involved. That aspect of their lives that we can just take for granted. That's Scorpio. That's the Scorpio thing. Um, and some people make a philosophy out of Scorpio or, or uh, teach Scorpio traits uh, as part of success, which is true with all signs. This Zen of tennis, I think of as very strong Scorpio with some Taurus qualities, the Taurus of, of not forcing things, of listening. Um, but Practice concentration, commit. This is from a website, uh, How to Practice Zen, te Zen Tennis. I'll go over some of these things. Very Scorpio. Understand and practice concentration, commitment, control, and confidence. In other words, be in the game. Focus on the game. And don't, number two, don't focus on winning. If you're focusing on winning, your attention is not in the game. It's on the result of the game. See how Scorpio this is? If you become one with the experience, you're not thinking about what's going to, you know, the strategy, how to win. You just become tennis. You become the game. Winning will come from better aligned focus and getting the basics right. Uh, forget what has happened in the previous point and focus on your next shot. So just get in the game. Focus on hitting the ball. Be in the tennis. 
without your mind projected into the future, thinking about the past. Um, so anyway, these rules are very, very Scorpio. Um, and I think with some Taurus qualities of, of you might say, listening, uh, um, not forcing things. Uh, so I wanted to mention this because it's not what is usually said about Scorpio. This doesn't have anything to do directly with your lower self being transformed into the higher self and the scorpion uh, and, and the uh, snake. Oh, of course, scorpion is another image of, of, uh, of Scorpio and the snake soaring like an eagle and then transforming you. It doesn't seem directly connected, but I think that this is really the essence of the Scorpio experience. Um, and now I'm going to show you the results of the study, the four greatest Scorpio people. This is a, um, our series of 12 zodiac signs where we do these extreme case sampling studies. And here I have links to two videos on the technical details of why these extreme case sampling studies are so important, vitally important for us to have a more evidence-based approach to astrology rather than rely only on our personal experience. The number one Scorpio person, well tied for number one, Hans Driesch, or Dreisch, I'm not sure how to even pronounce his name, a biologist, tied with Rosemary DeCamp, an actress. This is based on a point system, but no matter how you assign the points, these people are huge Scorpios. And then we also have a, a, a an athlete, a long jumper, Salam Sadiri, and then a murderer, Ryan Burgess. So these are our four Scorpios. Do they match the idea of Scorpio? This is how we can test our ideas. And what we're going to find, that based on the usual interpretations of Scorpio, actually three of the four people fit very well. These symptoms of Scorpio, um, the the murderer, you know, this this idea that there's a dark side to Scorpio, often it's true. When we read about Hans Dreisch, I'm not sure, again, I, hope, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I should have checked that. Um, his approach to biology is very Scorpio. And Salim, uh, Salim's uh, life, Sidiri, has some aspects of Scorpio too. The one that's not as obvious as Rosemary de Camp. Um, but I don't expect people to fit the image of Scorpio. I don't expect it to be obvious. What I expect is that this vibrational astrology interpretation of Scorpio, the deep immersion in their experiences, there are some evidences that that's true, just like it's true for um, Art Carney, even though the images are not as obviously true. Uh, so what I'm saying here is I'm not saying that the usual interpretations are wrong. It's It's almost impossible to evaluate whether Art Carney is going through a spiritual transformation and is, is in this, you know, sort of war zone in this lifetime to overcome his lower self. Um, maybe that's true, but it's very difficult to evaluate. The personality characteristics of, that are usually given to Scorpio are not obvious, but the way of bonding uh, that he has is clear. It's very clear. Um, so I find that when you're counseling, if you use these interpretations based on how a person relates to the world, your interpretation is virtually always accurate. You're not guessing. You know that they were merged into the experience. So let me go over these four uh, fairly quickly. Um, here's Hans Dreisch, or Hans Dreisch, I pronounce it, the biologist. And what I often say is that the zodiac signs do not tell us what a person does. Uh, they just tell us how he does it. So he does biology in a Scorpio way. And here's a quote from Wikipedia. I'll read it very quickly. In his work on sea urchins dividing cells of the embryo after the first cell division, he expected each cell to develop into the corresponding half of the animal to which it has been destined or pre-programmed. Of course, right? A cell is dividing. You expect that that cell is going to uh, develop into that part of the body that it eventually becomes. But instead, he found that each developed into a complete sea urchin. So this is a mysterious thing. He, he separates out these dividing cells, and instead of doing what they usually do in the context, each cell has the ability to develop into an entire sea urchin. It, it shocked him. Very, very strange. And we have this um, 
you know, we're familiar with this with stem cells now, that, that a cell can develop into an entire uh, organ. It's, it's very mysterious. It's not sure why this is true. Um, so in trying to understand this, he proposed that the autonomy of life that he deduced from his persistence of embryological development despite interferences was due to what he called entelechy, a term borrowed from Aristotle's philosophy to indicate a life force which he conceived as a psychoid or mind-like, uh, that is a non-spatial intensive and qualitative rather than spatial extensive and quantitative. Well, that might sound a bit abstract, but what he's saying is there must be some intelligence in the living being in order for it to know how to, for those cells to develop it into, into the entire um, organism. So he felt that there was something non-mechanistic, some some uh, life force, this idea of a vital essence. Uh, his vitalistic writings have been criticized for being based on a religious rather than objective scientific standpoint. Well, from his point of view, he is trying to explain his objective observations, which are very difficult to explain in a simple mechanistic way. Um, and he later... Um, uh, developed a deep interest in psychical research and parapsychology. In 1931, he published a methodology of parapsychological research. In 1933, he published a book on this topic titled Psychical Research, the Science of the Supernormal. From 1926 to 1927, he served as the president of the Society for Psychical Research. And so he became interested in uh, the paranormal and psychic abilities and so on. Um, so this is very Scorpio- but more, you know, as we usually think of Scorpio, but more um, specifically, it's his approach to biology of not just analyzing it in an objective, detached, analytical way, but going deep, um, analyzing how life develops and feeling what's going on, feeling it within yourself, and and as an experience and the mystery of it, becoming one with what you're doing, not just manipulating data from a distance at an arm's length, but moving completely and merging into what you're doing and wondering how this happens. You go deep, you can become mystical. These are typical things so that happen with Scorpio. So he exhibits many of the expected traits that we get from Scorpio, and they, and they develop from this way of relating to the world. Scorpio is intense. Um, it is transformative. So these things are true. It's intense and it's transformative because as you fully engage yourself in what you do, you become transformed with it. So he is classic Scorpio, especially if you think about Scorpio as this total immersion of yourself into what you're doing. Now, Rosemary de Camp, who has just as much Scorpio as uh, Hans Driesch. Oh, here's Hans Driesch's chart. I didn't show this to you. Sun, Moon, Mercury, uh, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. So he has all five inner planets, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Scorpio. Also Saturn and Scorpio, uh, the ruler of the Ascendant. He has Taurus rising. He has Venus and it's in Scorpio. Um, so that's his chart, huge Scorpio. And Rosemary de Camp um, has Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter in Scorpio and Scorpio rising. So again, huge amount of Scorpio. And her Scorpio is not as obvious. Much more subtle uh, than Hans Dreisch. Uh, and so, as I said before, from my point of view, subtle effects from signs are not unusual. Uh, so let's read about Rosemary de Camp. Uh, this is from this website here that I have over here in italics. Rosemary de Camp was a quintessential small town American mother. And this is she's an actress. She's a quintessential small town American mother in her acting roles. Um, and in her acting roles, she's a calm and steady presence in scores of films in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, she plays the mother to Doris Day. She's only actually 11 years older. They have to put tons of makeup on Rosemary de Camp to make her look older. Um, and, and she was actually younger than James Cagney, 
Um, and she plays, uh, James Cagney plays her son, and she's actually younger than him. So they're putting tons of makeup on her to make her look old. She just has this ability to play these maternal roles very well. Um, and even when playing a character close to her own age, such as the Red Cross worker in Pride of the Marines, De Camp's interest in the leading man, in this case uh, John Garfield, was strictly maternal. So she, you would think Scorpio is supposed to be sexy, charismatic, intense. You, you, you know, if you're using usual astrology, you would expect. Why is she not? Why is she playing these motherly roles? Most actors and actresses get involved in these, you know, very romantic and intense relationships in some of their movies. She's, uh, well, I'm sure that once in a while that happens, but her emphasis is on maternal roles. If we think of Scorpio, not necessarily as magnetic, not necessarily as charismatic, not necessarily as mysterious, not necessarily as sexy, but as just merging with the experience, that means that there's a lot of possible ways that that would happen. Um, so what is her Scorpio? Well, um, uh, is there any evidence um, that she's really Scorpio? Well, one thing we find from this other website is that she was a respected copper enamel artist. Uh, well, an enamel artist, I, I went to some websites um, to see what it is. It has some similarities to ceramics and pottery. I've done charts of so many potters and people that do ceramics with heavy, with a lots of Scorpio, not all of them, but a great many. It's a very common Scorpio experience, and sure enough, it's one of the things she does. And she, um, excuse me. Uh, she did shows of her, of her uh, copper enamel work. Um, so she has these activities. Um, it also says the attractive. You know, she was an attractive lady, but she didn't play these uh, sort of saucy, sexy roles. The attractive but always matronly actress innately looked like the warm, capable mother in the kitchen baking kid cookies for her children after school. She became that in real life, and she certainly played the part, often under heavy makeup, to, to make her look older. Um, so she was like this. She liked to be in the kitchen baking the cookies. She's in life, real life, not just talking about it. Um, deep bonding, becoming one. So family relationships, um, being fully engrossed. She's, she's alive. She's vital. She's in life. She's not just looking at it from a distance. Um, so, and also interesting is that the, the thing about ceramics and enameling is that it's literal, like a literal expression of Scorpio. The process of fusing the glaze or enamel under heat is very Scorpionic. This is what Scorpio does, fuses things. So what's very interesting to me is that sometimes the zodiac signs become very literal. We saw this with, for example, Leo, people who are like Jean Piaget, the child psychologist, who are involved in personal development. That's the essence of Leo. And the essence of Scorpio is fusion. And they literally fuse things. So without um, interviewing her, I wasn't able to find any interviews of her on YouTube or, or other places, um, or knowing her personally, it's very difficult to assess zodiac signs. Uh, they, they're very difficult for analyzing scientifically and objectively uh, studying aspect patterns we have much better results uh, in our research with getting measurable results uh, but there is, there are indications based on her work in enameling based uh, copper enamel artist based on the description of, of her life and how she operated that she did have the Scorpio lifestyle and this is why I suggest these alternative interpretations of the zodiac signs because they work consistently. If we stick with the idea that Scorpio is magnetic and charismatic, it's very difficult to explain how Rosemary de Camp fits those traits. Um, and uh, as I mentioned in those videos on extreme case sampling, when you get an extreme person like this, 
and and if they don't fit your expectations, um, your ideas are basically just not working. You don't have to do research on thousands of charts. It's just not working. The extreme people must fit your theory, as I explained in those other on the videos on extreme case sampling. Here's our third strongest person. We have very little biography on this fellow, Salim Sadiri. Um, but he was one of the top four people who scored, I think it was whatever number I cut it off, 25 or higher. There were four people. And interestingly, he had an experience in his life. Um, he was uh, getting ready for a, um, a competition and there was a javelin thrower who slipped and accidentally threw the javelin and and uh, went right through him. Um, so it was just an accident. And um, he was very uh, intensely in injured after months of rehabilitation. He decides to prepare himself for competition, so he recovers, and then he starts winning. He beats uh, several people. He, he uh, finishes second and won contest. So he comes back after having a javelin accidentally thrown into his body, rehabilitates himself, and and starts winning championships again. It's a real heroic story. If they haven't made a movie out of this, they really should. And this is the phoenix rising. So these images of Scorpio are often literally true. Here's the 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 phoenix rising from the ashes through the intensity through the commitment this is a scorpio story so these images that we have of, of the zodiac signs very often are true they're correct they are not always true they don't work um for rosemary to camp so the process is there and often you get the typical manifestations of it the charisma the mystery the intensity the, the rising from the ashes. Um, and that's why astrologers so often believe so strongly in astrology, because so often it works, but then there are the exceptions to the rule. And we have to explain these exceptions to the rule, like Ro Rosemary de Camp, and I think we can explain it by understanding the zodiac sign as a process, and also Art Carney. Un he works perfectly when we think of Scorpio as a process. So that's why I'm suggesting this model, this this idea of of Scorpio because it fits the data better. And here's Ryan Burgess, our last of the four top Scorpios. And Scorpio has a reputation for having an interest in the dark side of life. Um, no, I don't think there's anything inherently dark about Scorpio. And I'm, I know that many astrologers disagree with me. They think that Scorpio is inherently dark. Um, uh, I don't think it's inherently dark, but the ability of Scorpio to become fully immersed in an activity is an asset for activities like crime, which involve the heightened awareness so that you do not get caught, just like the image I gave of an animal, fully attentive and alert. Um, somebody's going to break into a house or whatever they're going to do, they have to be fully alert like an animal, fully engaged, and that's a, a Scorpio talent, to have that, and a Scorpio inclination, to have that full involvement um, in, in life. Now, by the way, um, if we look at the aspect patterns in the chart, here's uh, Ryan Burgess. Oh, I didn't do Salim. Here's Salim's chart, the uh, long jumper, the athlete. He has Scorpio rising, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, also Uranus and Scorpio. So all these people are extreme Scorpio. Here's Ryan Burgess, um, and he has Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars in Scorpio, also Uranus and Scorpio. So all these people are enormous amounts of Scorpio. Uh, so why does uh, one person become a highly productive contributing person in biology and another person become a murderer? Obviously there are a lot of reasons, astrological and non-astrological, but Burgess has in his natal chart a Uranus conjunct sun moon midpoint and in the 13th harmonic, let me show you this Uranus, Here's Uranus at 16 Scorpio, Sun at 9 Scorpio, Moon at 23 Scorpio. There's something called midpoint structures, and Uranus is directly in between Sun and Moon. I can go up here to midpoints, and it will tell me an 8-minute orb. So it's almost exactly uh, right there. And if we look at the 13th harmonic chart, 
We see that Uranus, Sun, and Moon are in a T-square with Mars. Mars is square the Sun exact to the minute. A very, very powerful Sun, Moon, um, Mars, Uranus, Grand Cross with very tight aspects. And in another tutorial video on uh, the people in the Mafia, I show how people in the Mafia leaders often have very strong 13th harmonic um, and so here we get this inclination to feel like he can make his own rules, do whatever he wants, and stand outside the law. Um, so that doesn't necessarily incline you to, to you know, a dysfunctional and uh, destructive lifestyle, an evil lifestyle. Um, but these things are can be conducive to it because the person feels very special, like they can just do whatever they want. Um, and in the ninth harmonic, he has Saturn says quadrant Neptune, which in in another uh, video on on criminals, uh, I I show how criminals and mafia leaders in particular often have these Saturn Neptune aspects in the ninth harmonic. You can watch these other tutorial videos on that if you're interested. But he has the signatures for pot being uh, potentially a criminal. So. Um, you know, he's, he's got those signatures. And it's not because those patterns are evil or negative. It's just they give certain traits that um, enable the person to go that way if the environment, um, you know, is traumatic and, and very negative and, uh, in, in a sense, encourages that lifestyle. So the aspects describe the behavior. The sign describes the, uh, how the person does what they do. Um, so that's it. Our conclusion is the people with extreme Scorpio do appear to consistently get absorbed in what they are doing. The deep focus and immersion inclines them to dig deeper and feel more deeply than other people. Uh, some of the people exhibit the traits that are often given for Scorpio, such as being metaphysical and interested in life's my mysteries. It's Hans Reich. Having intense experiences to overcome. Salim Sadiri, Inclined to the dark side. Ryan Burgess. Um, but these are different sides of Scorpio, and Rosemary de Camp and also um, Art Carney do not have conspicuous Scorpio traits. Uh, Rosemary de Camp does, however, appear to approach life in a Scorpio way, as does Art Carney, uh, being deeply immersed in whatever they give their attention to. And I think that's my last slide. Oh, just a, a last slide on um, uh, just letting you know about our, our websites, our software, and, and uh uh, some of the services that we have. So that's it, my friends. My point here is that it does appear that astrology works, but we need to respond to the data. I don't think we can just keep repeating the ideas we have, even though they're attractive, even though they're inspiring, even though they're beautiful ideas. We have to test them. This extreme case sampling is a way to test our ideas, improve our astrology, become more evidence-based. I think this is really exciting. I think we're really finding out what the zodiac signs really do and why um, the descriptions are, are, uh, prevail. They continue because they usually do work. They don't always work. And by digging a little deeper and seeing what this relationship to the world of each zodiac sign has and, and to each zodiac sign gives a certain way of relating to the world we then can get more consistent results and that help us understand how those uh, typical expressions of the zodiac signs happen thank you very much my friends god bless namaste